Hey folks, welcome to the basement. Uh, we're not at the property today and I figured I'm going to kind of start making uh, informational videos too as well here at the, the house when I'm not actually at the property. That way we continue the momentum that I want for this channel. So today we're gonna be talking about five tips that you must know and will help you when you are buying land. So these tips were put together using our experience when we were looking for property and some of the caveats that we found and some of the nuances and what the, the choke points were for buying property. And if only I knew these tips before we purchased land, it probably would have went way smoother than what it did. The end of our story was that we bought property. However, the journey to get to that point was uh, almost as so nerve wracking that we almost just gave up. So these five tips, again, are gonna help you purchase your next piece of property or your land for homesteading and off-grid. And just note that these tips on the whiteboard behind me start from tip number five down to the number one tip that I'm going to share. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. So let's start with tip number five. Use landwatch.com to your advantage when you are looking for property. Landwatch.com is an MLS system for properties just like Zillow and Realtor.com. However, they're catered directly towards property and land and farmland. And this is vitally important because just like doctors, there's many different types of real estate agents. And you're not gonna see too many real estate agents that specialize in land over on Zillow or Realtor. And if you do see those pieces of property on Zillow, I can promise you that 90% of them are already sold. So how do you use landwatch.com to your benefit? Well, other than the site lists property that you are looking for, there's also something hidden kind of in there that took us a while to figure out. Once you know this, I promise you, things will go a lot smoother. So as I said, real estate agents use landwatch.com to list their properties for sale. Most all real estate agents that specialize in land or houses also have their own website. So once you determine where you're wanting to look on landwatch.com, they, they have these cool features that you can look really in any region you want here in the United States. For my example, we live in Northeast Ohio and we were looking for property in Southern Ohio. So I went to landwatch.com and I hit that region and it really drilled down to the type of properties and the location that I was looking for. So landwatch.com in and of itself was just way better user experience when you were looking for property. The next thing you need to do is once you find the area that you know you want to look for property, take note of the real estate agent that is posted and listed on that piece of property that you found or in all the properties that you find in that area. And there's a reason for that. These real estate agents use landwatch.com as more of an advertising piece to get you and get the property out there to get it sold, right? Well, there's a delay in between when the real estate agents put their property on the market to the time it hits the MLS system on landwatch.com. So what you do is you get a hold of these real estate agents for the properties and you take and you bookmark their websites. And when properties come up, you can check it daily. I promise you, you're gonna be one of the first people that catch that piece of property coming onto the market. You can even go a step further and giving the real estate agent a call like we did. And that real estate agent, if he hears anything, he or she hears anything, they're going to know that somebody is interested. And I'll tell you what, there is nothing more motivating to a real estate agent when you call them and you say, I wanna buy a piece of property and this is what I want. I promise you, you will be one of the first people they call and you will be one of the first people that have access to see that new piece of property. All right, so tip number four. Tip number four is kind of a, okay, yeah, Justin, I understand. But really, really, really take this. Tip number four, know where and what you want. Our piece of property that we bought kind of wasn't what we were looking for but I can tell you, when we were going and looking at pieces of property, when we didn't know what we want or where we wanted it, 
We just spun our wheels and wasted resources. So know where you want it, where you want your land, and know what you want on your land. Are you looking for flat terrain? Are you looking for agriculture so you can maybe farm and do livestock? Are you looking for hilly terrain uh, for hunting or ATV? Know what you want and where you want it. That's also going to help with the previous tip of number five. How are you going to find what you're looking for if you don't know what you're looking for? And that's the whole point of tip number four. Know what you want. Me and my family, we made a list of things that we wanted for the piece of property. Uh, I wanted wood so I can hunt. My family wanted uh, rivers and, and creeks and maybe a pond. My wife wanted hills. So we put it out and then we prioritize an order. And usually you can dictate in the area based on what you're looking for. So if you want hills, you're gonna go, in our case, we went to Southern Ohio, uh, Western PA, as well as West, Northern West Virginia. And also we had to take into account how far the property was from where we currently live. Because the whole point behind us buying our piece of property is we wanted a place to go and get away, whether you call it a bug out location or a recreation place or just a piece of land that we can go and enjoy. Uh, we didn't want to drive, right? We have to get to that piece of property. And if it's four hours away from us, it, it just, it didn't make sense. So we actually determined how far do we want to drive if we were to drive there once a week. And we come up with about a hundred mile radius around our house from where we live at in our hometown uh, or about an hour and a half from our house. We were willing to drive that distance each way at least one time a week and that way we set the expectations on where we were actually looking at. Now if you're looking to move to homesteading obviously uh, that is a little different but in our case uh, we drew that bubble, we figured out where we wanted to go and what we wanted and it made things, if we just knew that before it would have made the process of purchasing land 10 times better. Tip number three, understanding what you want and what does it mean about what you want. And, and I, I don't mean to overcomplicate this, but you have to understand if you want hills, what to, to look for. If you want flat terrain, what to look out for. It, it just depends on the type of terrain that you're looking for. And it, it, it makes things a lot easier and it sets the expectations on what to expect when you buy or looking for certain pieces of land. If you're looking to buy, let's say uh, you want hilly country, the hills and slopes and, and mountains, let's just say in Northern West Virginia or Western PA or Southern Ohio, you have to take into consideration the weather patterns of that area. Also, where you're going to put your cabin, where you're gonna hang out the most, uh, is there rivers that wash out, uh, creeks, natural stuff, that, that flow down the river, uh, the winters, how are you gonna get up to the top of the mountain if that's where your homestead's at. So obviously those are the things that uh, most people look for when they're looking at hills. But there's one thing that is very important, especially for the long term of properties when you're looking for hill slopes, is to make sure wherever you're gonna be spending the most of your time on your piece of property, that it is facing south. So why does it matter if your property is, if where you're wanting to put your cabin or tent or campsite is facing south? It's because the sun in North America actually is southern from North America. So when the sun comes up, it actually is on the south side of most properties. It may look like it's dead up in the side or up in the, up in the sky, but it is not. And uh, it's slightly on the south. And what that does is it allows you to heat and keep warmer in the winter. It also allows the areas on that side of the, the hill to dry out faster, and it just creates a lot better uh, living conditions and hanging out and recreation conditions. There's nothing wrong with the south side. That's usually typically where you're gonna get your pretty, especially on higher elevations, where you're gonna get your, your pretty um, cloud coverage. Uh, but you don't want your house in there. It's gonna be like gloomy all the time or, or just constantly a little chillier than what it normally is in the weather. So it's important to take that into consideration. If you're looking for flat land, it's also important to understand what comes along with flat property. We bought flat property. It has a slight slope. It's about uh, 19 feet elevation difference between a, a half a mile. So 18 acres skinny, it's about 100 yards wide and about 19 feet different 
difference from the back of the property to the front. What that means is that the property, when it rains, it is wet. And usually swampy, wet property comes with flat property. So if you're into that, or you looking at a piece of property that may look dry during, let's say the summer months, just take into account drainage. Uh, here on our property, we ended up putting tiles, what is known as tiles or, or small ditches, farmers use them to uh, guide water for irrigation and also keep water or keep the, the property from eroding away uh, and, and dry it out so they can actually farm it. So uh, just knowing the terrain and, and then also know what comes with that. The, the pros and cons. All right, so tip number two is paying for property. Quite honestly, this was the most pain in the butt thing when, I, when my family, we went to go buy a piece of property. The reason being is because traditionally banks don't give loans or they don't finance a piece of property. It might sound crazy, but a piece of property to them has no value in collateral. There's no structure on it. And we did find a couple larger banks that would do some financing, but usually the APR was like through the roof or the interest rate was through the roof. And as well as um, the loan terms were just whacked out. And then they also wanted specifics. So we ended up looking at smaller credit unions. Those were a tip that we were given through people, especially watching other YouTube videos and other people that were buying property. So we ended up visiting a couple local uh, banks, these smaller banks. And the reason you do that is because a lot of times they understand the needs in, of the loans generally in that area. And they're more likely to provide a loan to people in that area because they just understand that there's a lot more rural areas uh, that uh, with their clientele. We found that those were usually high like pay down or high down payments. I'm talking 70% down payment with a short five, five year uh, finance for the rest of it or three year or two year. And in our case, that wasn't possible. So in most cases for most individuals, uh, you kind of want to stay around the ballpark, let's say of a car payment. That's what we wanted. We wanted to stick around a car payment or a little less. And we ended up being able to do that by talking to the landowner that we ended up purchasing the property. And we decided to do owner financing. This a lot of times comes with a higher APR or interest rate. Uh, however, they're a lot more flexible on giving you that. And the bigger down payment that you can put down on that, the better off you are. So owner financing for us was the best option. We have great credit, but just couldn't get our hands on the financing for the rest of the property. And we ended up going back to owner financing at a 9% rate. Now, before you say, oh my gosh, Justin, that's a high interest rate. Um, just know that uh, you ha it comes with a plan. So we did a 10 year owner financing and we had enough that put our payments so low that we were able to actually cut that down to a five year payment with no early payoff fees and no balloon payments. So as long as you're, you're doing the finances of the owner financing right and you're able to do it and it's in your favor with no late pen or early payoff penalties, uh, you can do a longer term, <clears throat> higher payment and pay it off early and then get out with paying in our case around 4.5%. All right, tip number one. This is by far the best tip I can give anybody when they're purchasing a piece of property. See, all of these tips, they come naturally. You're gonna figure it out. But there's a couple things ahead of the game uh, that a lot of people don't think about, and it's extremely important, and that's avoid government. And when I say avoid government, I'm talking about zoning regulations. Most of the time, municipalities have these zoning regulations for the safety and the overall goal of a city, right? They're going to tell you where you can build, how you can build it, and what you can build, and how you do things. And that's fine and dandy for places that uh, you want to live there, but why would you buy a piece of property, invest all this money and all this time to be told what you can do on that piece of property. So avoiding the government is probably the best 
advice I can give you. Look for places that have no zoning requirements. And trust me, they're all over the place. And usually they're a small township. Usually townships or counties uh, where there's a lot of county roads rather than just municipality roads or township roads. And uh, it'll allow you to do just about whatever you want. So with that, those are five tips that would have helped me out and I hope they help you out. If you've bought a piece of property and you wanna share what your experiences were or what you have to, the tips you have to provide other people, go ahead and post them down in the comments right now so everybody can, can see them because everybody's experience is a little different and these five tips are just based on my experience. Also, leave down in the comments, what type of property would you like? Do you like hills? Do you like the flat terrain? What about the woods? I mean, we bought woods and I'll tell you, I absolutely love it. The trees, the, the forest aspect of it, the seasonal creeks, I couldn't be more happier with mine. I hope these five tips help you look for your next piece of property. It helped me, I really wish I would have known these. And again, if you have any other tips, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'm sure everybody would be happy to, to see your experience too as well. I love the dialogues at the, in the comments of these videos. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Stay safe and get outside.